Hello everybody, this is Dumpster Cat. Welcome back to another Pioneer video. In this one, we're going to be testing out Doomwake's Golgari Vehicles deck. Obviously, we know that Gruel Vehicles or Gruel Boats has been very popular and quite um, powerful as of late in the format. And he decided to take a spin on that deck where you just take out red um, and add in black. Obviously, you don't have access to cards like Reckless Storm Seeker or Bone Crusher Giant. Um, but you do have access to Fatal Push and Thoughtsies in our colors, which is very nice, um, plus the addition of Graveyard Trespasser and Misery Shadow. Now, this is an archetype that has obviously been very powerful in the past um, with the red and green colors. Um, however, with the black and green colors, Doomick was able to 5-0 on stream, so we do know that this is um, a powerful deck, uh, obviously a powerful archetype, but... Um, the deck in specific, just with the addition of the black color, does need some more testing, and so I thought that I would uh, give it a try, as um, I have a plethora of experience with black and green colors in the past, um, in Pioneer and Modern. Um, I've even, um, just taking a look at some of my other decks, I've even played around with this theme, um, where you're just like curving into, you're utilizing your four uh, elves and curving into powerful three and five drops, uh, this one is obviously not complete yet, but with the Prisons of Obosh, you get to play um, just really, really powerful three drops, uh, Riding Registrar edition here, alongside, of course, the Sky Sovereigns. Uh, another deck that I played around with um, that utilized this kind of same mechanic was this uh, just straight up Sky Sovereign list, which I featured on one of my tireless testing videos, I believe. Um, just flexing the Sky Sovereigns in a more traditional Black Green Veterans deck, and this, this was a pretty powerful deck as well. Uh, but circling back to this one, uh, I think this will be really powerful. I'm looking forward to testing it out. Uh, sideboard, not sure about the third Damping Sphere. I feel like this could just be like a Duress. Um, same thing with the Outland Liberator. may just want like another Tire Sunder. But main deck feels really nice. Uh, I'll be honest, my at first glance, I really wanted to play two Skuses in uh, place of these Misery Shadows. Um, but I think I'll give the deck just as is a try and then make changes thereafter. So with that being said, consider subscribing uh, if you enjoy this type of content. I have a Patreon as well. You could go check out in the description. And yeah, with that being said, let's get into the matches. All right, so here we are for round one. I had a bit of a problem with the recording, so we started a turn late. Oh, we have to mulligan to six, and the opponent has a citrus supplier into whatever their deck is, at, perhaps like a uh, Esper Greasefang build. Um, but I guess... Yeah, with this this hand, I think let's just start with the Thought Seas. No need to go go with the Elves, um, the Elvish Mystic right now. Interesting. Deadly Dispute, Treasure Cruise. Um, I think I... I'll just take the Treasure Cruise. Seems like the most powerful card. I mean, Double Deadly Dispute is just more card advantage, but Treasure Cruise is going to be a bit more uh, mana efficient for them. Extinction event, fatal push, so looks like just maybe a control deck of some sort. Here, just go with the Elvish Mystic. So another um, aspect of this deck that I didn't touch on in the deck tech is the presence of Jagantha's companion. Um, I think that any companion uh, in general in the format is just really, really overpowered at the moment. Uh, as it's so mid-range based um, and so having access to just the 8th card is really really powerful in my opinion um, and uh, kind of overlooked in the format at, at least in general I feel like at the moment okay so they used both their deadly disputes right sorry I was kind of wasn't paying attention um, well Flahi Flaji archaeologists interesting um, still, like, no sort of win condition from the opponent, um, at least as of now. I think here, uh, I'll just probably just run out the El uh, Lanamore Elves, kind of flooding out just a bit. Um, yeah. Only would have attacked for two with the lair. 
Okay, fatal push is fine. <clears throat> okay, treasure crew. So opponents doing their thing, but I'm curious to see what their win condition is. Um, yeah, they're just drawing a bunch of cards. Yep. <laughs> is that the fourth one? Yeah, fourth did the dispute. Very interesting. Another Stitcher Supplier, for sure. Demonic Bargain. What is this card? Oh, very interesting. So perhaps that is indicative of some type of combo. Um, I guess we'll see, though. Um, Gigantha, perhaps? Uh, ah, no, I, I, it makes more sense to start with the, the vehicle, actually as turn after we could potentially just um, play Gigantha and then crew Sky Sovereign with it. We do have to target the supplier, I believe, but I mean, we have to go for this, right? Um, yeah, Demonic Bargain is really, really interesting. Exile top 13, then search your lever for a card. I mean, <laughs> if they draw another one of these, then they're going to be exiling half their deck, so I'm not sure how powerful this card would be in that case. Um, I have to think, yeah, I'm not really sure what their win condition would be. Maybe just fast as Oracle, they just want to mill themselves as fast as possible. Um, perhaps, yeah, I mean, I guess with the Demonic Bargain, that kind of makes sense. Demonic Bargain searching up Thassa's Oracle. You would have to play like four Thassa's Oracle in that case, but uh, perhaps what, that's what the opponent is going for. Uh, okay, they're taking their time with this one, not really sure why, um, but yeah, in the case of Thassa's Oracle, uh, I guess we would want to bring in I guess the go blinks really nice. Um, I don't think the scavenging uses, but perhaps if we see like a hall of storm giants, then we want the trophy. Maybe even damping sphere. I mean, I really hate bringing this card against like pretty much just non lotus field decks. Um, example would be like blue red phoenix. I really hate bringing that in. Uh, just because it like um, inhibits us as much as it inhibits them, pretty much. However, you know, maybe in this build, as we aren't really playing, oh, there's another demonic bargain. Okay, we aren't really playing as much like efficiently costed cards as a typical mid range deck would. Perhaps damping sphere is a bit more well oriented. Okay, yeah, so it is Thassa's Oracle. We got it. Really cool build from the opponent there. Really interesting. And they're tapping a lot there. Not really sure why. So they they've been the Thassa's Oracle, so they they don't want it. That's pretty interesting. Um Okay, let's start with a Thought Seize. That was a good draw. And then just go on the Sky Sovereign beat down plan. Whoa, okay. Um So probably have to take this. Um, double Thassa's Oracle is really good for them, though. Um, they do have Odawara, though, right? So that's, yeah. That inhibits us quite a bit as well. But I do think we just have to go for it here as... I don't, like, we could, like, fire up double Mutavolt, but I don't think that's really getting us anywhere. Um, and then we could just start beating for five. Probably just... Oh, wow. What a draw. That was really lucky. Jeez. Wow. I mean, yeah, we can't really play around that, but jeez, that was kind of insane. Kind of been... Oh, <laughs> instant treasure. Okay, so I guess they... 
Wow, okay. I mean, good top deck from the opponent is all I could say there. Can't really do anything about that. So you definitely want the go blanks. Um, I think that's it. I would have loved to have a Necroventure, but I can't really do anything about that. Could take out Fatal Pushes and I think just run it back like this. Uh, seems like the best we could do. But yeah, gosh, that, that, <laughs> that felt really bad. Um, with the top deck combo piece, essentially, right? Okay, so this one does not have an elf mana dork. We're still supposed to go for it, I wonder, I think. I think being on the play, we could go for it. Obviously, that doesn't feel the best, but um, I think it is just the best we could do. They're not like too fast of a combo, so it's like not like the worst. But okay, so they mill over. okay. Go blank is really nice, but they mill over double demonic bargain, which is really good for us as well. Um, yeah. Another reason why I kept this hand is uh, Graveyard Trespasser seems to be at least just a little bit relevant as compared to like Left Struck Beast or another tracker. But yeah, that was really unfortunate how I just top decked the Demonic Bargain last game. Yeah, but I mean, this deck seems really kind of inconsistent though to me, at least at first glance with the. Uh, having i'm guessing just uh eight combo pieces with the four demonic bargain four thassa's oracle you're just like so likely to mill over them that doesn't really seem like the best to me but i, I don't know this is the first time i've seen it so what do i know okay um yeah i think i like just um playing out the trespasser and getting that going. Yeah, this deck has a, at least our deck, has a fairly, fairly quick clock with the presence of the chariot, which I do enjoy. Okay, there's the demonic bargain. Um, dang, they just, that's really insane how they just had it there. Um, so there's two oracles gone. They probably just, I wonder, probably went for a treasure cruise, I would imagine. Um, yeah, nothing new there from the sideboard, though. Um, could attack. They will block, I would assume, and I think we just have to go for the Chariot. Um, just, like, kill them as fast as possible. Don't do any, like, shenanigans with, um, go blank. They have 27 cards in the library, though. Looks like they found a treasure cruise off the demonic bargain, which makes sense. Tap two for an archeologist. Get back, um, <clears throat> let's see what they wanna get back. What was that, thought sees? Consider, sorry, okay. Yeah, they really just, um, Going through the deck pretty quickly, though. Um, this is pretty interesting here. I th again, I think I just want to go on the, the beatdown plan. Um, so, just play out the tracker crew up chariot with it um another really nice uh 
interaction uh, or just like the presence of tracker plus left, left struck beast is really nice um, yeah let's take the supplier actually and um, just make another cat token <clears throat> So the block chariot, they could block a cat token if they want to. And then, yeah, I mean, 18 cards a deck though, so pretty nice start from the opponent. But yeah, I don't know. They see, they, as much as they're just like beating us here, it seems like they obviously got really, really lucky game one, but um like they exiled or they milled over two bargains this game and then just had a third one in hand already um two but there are two fastest oracles gone already um so yeah fortunately they have to mill three again and then i don't know if this besager is doing anything i don't i don't really think it is so let's just play that out and play an elf. And yeah, see what they have. Wow, just another bargain. That that has to be so, oh my gosh. They, that, that has to be so lucky though, right? They might not. They have Jace as well, okay. Wow. So they had just the combo in hand. There's no way that the uh, last uh, card in, the, in their library was fastest oracle. I mean, I don't know. I think that's kind of lucky. Yeah, they do have so much card advantage, so maybe I just shouldn't be saying that. But let me let me know what you guys think about that matchup. I think that we just got pretty unlucky there. We also didn't draw our thoughtseizes, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, tough stuff. But see you guys for match two. Okay, here for match number two, feeling really bad after that <laughs> match one. I, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that matchup. Like, I feel like they just got really lucky, but not sure. Um, really nice hand, though, in this new match. Um, uh, I think I worry about aggro enough to where I don't want to shock in my overgrown tomb. <laughs> Mountain could mean just mono red, gruel, Rakdos. Interesting. Voldaren, Epicure is an interesting one. Um, uh, I think here, I, instead of going for like a Love Strict Beast or Tracker, I think I just want to go. Ah! Uh, that may be incorrect, actually. I was going to say it could go like Elf, Elf, Heart Desire. But yeah, I think I'd rather just get down um, the Tracker or the Love Struck Beast. Um, I'm sure it doesn't like matter too much, but I think I'll, I'll go with a tracker. Still not quite sure what the opponent is on though. Perhaps the three toughness of the tracker is a uh, um, bit problematic as we see here. Looks like they may have just like a two minute burn spell that we have to play around. Okay, so looks like they're just like Boros burn. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. So in that case, oh, we didn't have third land, which kind of sucks, but let's just attack. And then just play out the left struck beast, I suppose. It's kind of the best we could do. Yeah, maybe going for the beast was the more correct decision there. Uh, last last turn. Okay, third Epicure 
for the opponent. Gets the counter. Oh, Searing Blood is really scary. Good for them. But they do only have two cards in hand. Thankfully, we do hit the third land drop. Um, as, yeah, probably just like go play out both our elves. Um, and then, uh, I think, uh, interesting, yeah, I think we just attack with both here. Be beginning to worry about my life total, but yeah, I think they'll just double block this, and which is completely fine, and then they'll take five, go down to nine, and then hopefully we could set up just boat or chariot next turn, and be okay with it. They're gonna crack some blood tokens. Oh, they find den, which is really powerful. Kind of scary there. Okay, so we only take two. So they may just want to be chump block mode with the epic here. Um, okay. I think this turn, let's just go for the Sky Sovereign. Um, we, you know, actually, we could have Sky Sovereign hit the epic here, but I think I'm scared enough of just them, like having one-off creatures and beating us in that I'll just kill the two power creature at this point. No, okay, decide not to use the last blood token. Yeah, past turn. So a bit of a stressful game here, but we'll see how far they're able to get. We do have just a lot of power next turn. And I just do this, which just makes them dead on board, I believe, right? We know to go down to four. Um, and then, or not dead on board, but yeah, we have the chariot in hand to uh, grow the, or sorry, to crew the Sky Sovereign. We even could have gone like Misery Shadow plus Elf to crew it. Yeah, I mean, really powerful though, as I guess the first match we we're kind of getting to see uh, the sheer power level of the vehicles at least. Um, so, like Scavenging use, just gaining life. Other than that, Tear Sunder looks like it could be pretty useful as well. I wonder if you even want the Outland Liberator. I mean, we only saw what Kumano faces Kakazan. And is, is that the. I guess the Epic here is probably not too efficient. Um, yeah, I don't think we want the Outland Liberators, but I guess we could start by definitely taking out all four of these Thought Seizes. And then perhaps we just want a trophy, just an extra removal spell, although it's pretty inefficient against, against them. Yeah, pretty promising uh, game, last game. Always feel it's good to be winning. <laughs> Definitely say that. Uh, obviously, we know that uh, Doomac did 5-0 with this, so it's not like a complete terrible deck, but at least with the brews that I've had in the past, it <laughs> always feels nice to at least get one game down, right? Okay, Swift Speed from the opponent. We go with an elf, scavenging ooze was a nice draw. And then I think we just want to be hitting our land drops from now on. Uh, as Trespasser is really nice. And then Chariot and Love Struck Beast are nice beaters as well. So if they have like Burn Spill on the elf, then we're feeling pretty bad. Obviously the opponent being on the play helped them a lot here. Burrow Strong, okay. So they just really want to beat us down here. In that case, um, I think I'll just go with the Lovestruck Beast 
as it's just the, the biggest blocker we could have access to. And I think that's just exactly exactly what we want in this scenario. I really love love this card, Love Struck Beast. I played it so much um, when it was in standard with uh, Golgari Adventures or Golgari Clover. That deck was so fun. Okay, so they have a really good turn here, though, with Epicure plus Skewer the Critics. Um, but they are dwindling, dwindling in cards in hand, and if we're able to kill some of their creatures, we could get these Skews and Trespasser online. Um, I don't think I want to shock in this tomb. So with three mana available, we could go Scooze plus Mystic, or just go with the Trace Trespasser. Um, I think I like going with the Scooze plus Mystic plan. Definitely like puts a target on the Scooze, which I enjoy doing, uh, especially when I'm a seven life. Um, but obviously if they have like Boros Charm into Skewer the Critics or another Burden Spell, then we can't really do much about that, right? We have fast start from the opponent, them being on the play, we can't really do much about that, I think. Can't imagine them attacking here. Okay, so sweet. They didn't attack. I wonder what they could have though. They may just be flooded. They could obviously have another Boros Charm though. Have to be a bit wary of. So we did get the land, which is nice. Fourth land. I would imagine we just go chariot here, um, which I think just frees up an attack from us, which is nice. With the uh, love struck beast, I don't think we want to be attacking the screws yet. I imagine they just take it, or just uh, they just have to take it here, though, right? Yeah, and so typically, like whenever you want to be either using your mana dorks or lands to cast spells, typically you would want to use your mana dorks first. Um, however, in this spot, we want to use them as just blockers, so we do do not want to do that. Uh, I say that you want to use your mana dorks first, though, uh, when you're spending mana, though, just because, say, like if we cast that chariot, we tap to both elves and then like these two lands we're still holding up fatal push or any other uh, removal spell with our black mana open obviously we don't have that but uh, in future scenarios it's just the right thing to do looks like we're just dead here though skewer yeah lightning strike okay fair enough um yeah bit of an unfortunate um, scenario there scenario there but that's it, it that's okay they're the aggressor on the play that's what's gonna happen um i mean i guess veraska gains life but I don't, I don't think we're getting to four mana that often um so yeah i think we just run it back Okay, yeah, really, really nice hand again on the play. This one's going to be really impactful, especially if they don't have a burn spell for the Elvish Mystic. Graveyard Trespar Trespasser and Scooze, obviously like last game, present very efficient and effective threats. So they multi six. Guess we could say GG there. Epicure, okay. Another layer. I think we just want to get the left struck beast out. No, from last game. Searing Blood, ooh, okay, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I think we just want to go for the tracker, I would imagine, here. Kind of sucks that we can't attack anymore with the beast, but <clears throat> I think that this should be fine here. Okay. Yeah, powerful, very powerful. Oh, nice, okay, sweet, 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 sweet draw there. So now we can attack. Yeah, I think Love Struck Beast is just really important in this matchup, both being a really nice blocker and just a solid beater. Obviously works well um, with the Elves, Mana Dorks, as well. And I think... I can't imagine that they have 12 points of burn next turn, so I think we just want to go with the Love Struck Beast. But we could also go for Trespasser um, just to gain life, but I think I'd honestly rather do that with the Scoos and have a bit bigger of a body. We'll see what they have here, though. Another Epicure. It's fine. And... Oh. Okay, I actually did not think of that. Screw the critics on the token to mitigate us from attacking is actually pretty good, but we do have the Lair of the Hydra. Um, Oh, okay, and they just can see that. I guess they uh, may have seen that or just had seen enough. I get, uh, yeah, I guess they didn't. They were stuck on lands. Um, I think they're still in this game, but uh, yeah, we fire up Lair. Yeah, and then I guess they they take nine, go down to seven, and then we have Graveyard Trespass or Scoos. Okay, so um, yeah, bit of a nice matchup there, I suppose, and really nice. Uh, way of featuring especially left strike beast but also the vehicles as well okay here for match three on the play nicely uh, with a definitely keepable hand definitely like this one um don't have access to black mana at the moment but with no black cards in hand i think that is completely fine Almost thought I, I put the black side of this card down first. <laughs> May have to slow down a bit. Blooming Marsh. Grease Bank. Oath of Nyssa. Interesting. Not really sure what that means. Could just be mono green. Splashing black for something. Can't imagine what they would want to splash, though, honestly. Okay, sorry I'm munching on a pumpkin muffin right now, <laughs> but Lily on the last hope. So is this just mid-range? I would honestly, like, I don't think I've ever played against the mirror match. So this is going to be really fun. Um, I think I just want to run out the tracker here in that case. Um, yeah, don't care too much about like the the beat down game plan at least at the moment I, 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 I'm assuming this is a, a mirror match at least of swords um, then this is a pretty interesting one I don't think this is like a typical mid range card but uh, definitely works well with like Grim Flayer and uh, that's kind of it honestly oh Salt Eye fun
Still haven't carried it. Okay. Cool stuff. Always love to see mid range decks in the format, other mid range decks. Um, I think here, though, we can pretty easily um, go just Heart's Desire into Love Struck Beast. Yeah, just be as mana efficient as possible. And then set up for possible boat next turn if our elf, elf survives. Uh, which it probably won't if they're just going to want to cast this uh, Liliana here. But even then, like, we're, we're still in really good shape. Have a really good board. Have second track of next turn. The clue tokens are like oddly really impactful. <laughs> Uh, just in the mid-range matchup, mid-range uh, mirror. I guess I don't even know if this is a mid-range deck anymore. <laughs> but I, like, I'm so. Oh, what is it? Another oath? Oh, elvish mystic. I'm so like. Uh, at least in pioneer, I'm like, if black and green like gets any sort of a win, then I'm, I'm gonna be all over it. <laughs> uh, just cause, uh, like I like I've been saying like. It's so hard to find any good black and green decks these days. So let's play our black land and go ahead and attack this Liliana down. But yeah, and like, it's even questionable that this is a um, mid-range deck. You could like easily say that this is just like uh, an aggro deck with some interaction <laughs> which is that in a, a mid-range deck i don't know i don't i wouldn't say so but perhaps to some people it is so if they have another removal spell for our token that mitigates at least the left strike beast at the moment but still do have the two trackers and then just the sky server next turn should really uh ensure um our advantage here. They do have five cards in hand though. They could have many things as um not really sure what they're up to. I'm gonna go back to munching on my muffin if you guys don't mind. Okay, another O for the Nissa. Let's see what they get. That oh, super friends. That's awesome. Sorry, I don't know if it, you could hear me munching. Maybe some unwanted ASMR here. <laughs> Dang, that's really sweet. That is really sweet. Kind of reminds me of. Uh, some old, like, Karth the Lion decks from Modern. Both of this, uh, Karth, some Mana Dorks, and just, like, a bunch of Planeswalkers. Is that really cool? Okay. Beetle Push is the draw. Um, yes, I do... Get our token down so we can't attack the left struck beast, but I believe we should be fine. Yeah, let's just play Sky Sovereign, kill their elf, and then attack down the Liliana with both trackers again. And yeah, it should definitely be like in good shape. Sky Sovereign's just like so good against any other sort of mid-range deck it's just surprisingly just such a powerful card i'm really just in love with that card so liliana will die they'll have three cards in hand for next turn um but yeah we're looking really good especially with like these muta vaults uh we have a lot of uh a lot of power in play 
Paper Push, uh, sneakily could be pretty good here, especially with the clue tokens. Could activate Revolt. But yeah, I mean, even just like uh, Left Strike Beast, even though it can't attack, just crewing Sky Sovereign could be very impactful as well. But yeah, Interplanar Beacons, Super Friends, seems so from fun from the opponent here. Could be an interesting uh, place of, uh, it's kind of like sparks my mind for brewing, uh, at least like in, for myself. Um, let us just crew here, we drew a Sigus Chariot, which just is like the nail in the coffin, <laughs> I feel like at this point. <laughs> They could have like an assassin's trophy they want to be using on the trophy or on the sky sovereign rather um but yeah it looks like we're just really able to get the job done here planeswalker spells what is this this is only for planeswalkers right if they do this spend this mana only to cast planeswalker spells so they can't use this mana or no, oh, they have Wandering Emperor. Okay, that's really sweet. I was like, what instant speed Planeswalker is available? But I forgot about Wandering Emperor, of course. So they can exile the Sky Sovereign, which is pretty good. Yep. And then they take eight. And then we just play out the Chariot. Yeah, I mean, this is really sweet from the opponent, though. Oh, I guess, yeah, Oath of Nissa just allows them to cast any Planeswalker they want to. I guess Inner Planar Beacon does that as well, but... Yeah, kind of just, like, figuring out the deck in my mind right now. Yeah, this is fun, though. Really having fun with this deck. <laughs> it's, like, black and green color, which I love. Midrange, kinda, which I love, and then just powerful which is definitely an added benefit when you lose as much as i do playing <laughs> black and green and pioneer unfortunately nahiri okay that's a good one so they can kill the love strike beast okay they're just gonna go for that which is definitely fine um not too worried about that. I wonder if they'll make a token with their Wandering Emperor here. That may just be like the best choice for them. Obviously it plays really nicely in Seraphia the Push. Okay, they don't. Makes sense. 1-4 First Strike Defender Hexproof. Another Chariot. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, definitely gonna attack here, but... I guess we can just go, like... Um... I guess we could go two creatures at... I mean, we could just also just go face, which is like not terrible, but I think the correct decision is to go, well, if, it, if we go face, then they take eight, go down to five, they could like minus our chariot, make a token, yeah, I think we're still in really good shape there, though. We even have Muta Vaults, which doesn't make us have lethal but I guess it's still correct to fire these up kind of always I've never really played with meat Vault before so kind of forgetting about them here but should definitely use them yeah just make another kitty cat and then should be good here on out I wonder if they have like a Big card to get for this though. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I could have like a Titan of Industry or something like that. 
which wouldn't be like terrible in their main deck. Okay, they're at one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so far, like, this is why I love Pioneer. I mean, I hate Pioneer, but I also love it. <laughs> I hate it because, like, Rakdos just, like, slaughters everybody with Fable. I also hate it because, maybe to a lesser extent now, but Mono Green just slaughters everybody with their uh, Karns and stuff. But I also love it because we get really cool, um, get, or get to see really cool decks like the opponents here. Um, you know, sadly enough though, like uh, they're probably not going to be having much success. But uh, as to compare it to like a, a format like Modern, where I feel like Modern's a lot more open in terms of its brewing capabilities as compared to Pioneer, but I'm getting, getting uh, off subject here. So against the super friends, I think obviously Trophy is nice. Uh, Vraska's uh, mid-range elements could be nice as well. Ooh, freaky with that love strike beast if you saw that. Oh yeah, what the heck. Um, Terra Sunder, maybe, I don't, yeah, I think I'll bring it in. And then we could cut I guess f some amount of fatal pushes. They have the mana that works though. I mean, our deck seems just like really good in general. I guess we could cut Misery Shadow though. Cut Misery Shadow and then cut, I suppose, like one fatal push as it did just rot in our hand last game. Ah, uh, mm, I mean, a lot of other planeswalkers make tokens though, so maybe keeping more in is fine or keeping the fourth one in is fine. Shouldn't matter too much. Um, okay, yeah, definitely like this hand on the draw, but we do surprisingly have a turn one play with the left struck beast, which is nice, or heart's desire rather. So there are base Sultai. Um which what other planeswalkers does that mean? Uh they could have Lilian of the Veil. Really interesting that they chose, or seemingly are choosing, the last hope over of the veil. Um, not really sure what that could mean. I, I guess just that they have chosen to, or decided that that's just like the more powerful planeswalker, which it may even it may be correct. I'm not really sure. There are a lot of X ones in the format right now. That's for sure. That's for certain. Um, yep, here to play our elf and then the tomb tapped. Um, and a confluence, okay, makes sense. Oh, last hope, okay, that's pretty good. Um, that's really good, actually. Wow, that's yeah, that's pretty good. I think in that case, sorry. This token's going to be dead next turn. I think we just have to run out the uh, Trespasser. If we were like... And we could even eat this, yeah. If we were... Um, uh, for, yeah, if we were on the play, then this would have been dead. Or, I don't, I, that's, I don't want to think about that. Um, but yeah. not worth thinking about that is two green one white ooh Nissa okay cool very nice so it's a really good blocker for them uh, we do just have Seekus Chariot though um, so what does this do Gain X life. Ooh, draw X cards. Ooh, okay, okay. So I may just want to like tear asunder 
actually so ward so they do have to pay ward on this so I think I just want to go for chariot honestly and then just set it for like attacks next turn and then I will attack down first oh, that's a kind of interesting yeah I think because I don't care about the uh Liliana right now too much I, I do believe ward counts abilities in addition to spells I may be incorrect but I, th I think that's how ward works I would imagine that's how it works um block here though but yeah just this ultimate seems really uh nasty for us so let's put the attacker in there they just block and then we throw down the chariot Um, next turn, we could tear under something. One of their planeswalkers. Okay, don't shock that in. It seems like they might have been thinking about it though. Curated, surprisingly pretty good as a blocker. Okay, and that makes sense. They go plus on the cat token, make another plant token. Oh, kind of plant tribal here. Um, Seiju, not bad in mana confluence. Um, I guess I could play Urborg and then hmm. If we play Left Shark Beast, we could Crew Chariot attack with three attackers. Yeah, um, hmm. I think I just kind of want to, it's a, it's tough, but I think I just want to tear Sunder the Liliana here. We could actually, hmm, we could even fire up the Muta Vaults. It's a bit of a complicated turn. I mean, I guess we don't have to tear asunder this until, like, last moment possible, as it's not, like, too impactful at the moment, so I think we're, I think we are actually just free to, um, do this here, um, uh, play with the left struck beast, the fire chariot, probably just, like, in the long term, a bit better for us. And then, Swing all at, or swing almost all at. I think again, just the Nissa. Just creating blockers is like kind of annoying. Yeah, and then we could even besage you their mana confluence on like their upkeep or just hold up terrace under okay so they are gonna block like that which makes sense yeah and then yeah i think just next turn we just have so much uh power in play it shouldn't matter too much um i think i will besage you upkeep this mana confluence Yeah, I think we should be in pretty good shape. They have four cards in hand. Shrink one of our to cat tokens. We can make another plant token off Nissa, and then uh, what's like the worst thing they could have? I wonder. I mean, I guess okay. So they do have red mana now. I forgot they had the uh, blood crypt in their deck. They can't cast Nahiri. Um can't definitely can't cast wandering emperor or no sorry they can't cast nahiri because still carry it my bad so maybe besage ewing wasn't like too uh meaningful but probably still correct
This is a pretty interesting match though. I like how much we're having to think about our decisions against a really, really sweet deck like theirs. Okay, Oath of Nyssa to start. So that opens up all their Planeswalkers. Okay, just an Overgrown Tomb, gotcha. There it is. Shock it in, so six mana available to them. Ooh, they have like a Garrick Cursed Huntsman. That would be pretty good. Soar and Solemn Visitor. Elspeth, okay. Oof. So that's very good. Um, They could even like Elspeth and then minus Nyssa. Let's make them all two twos, which uh, is actually pretty um, pretty good. But yeah, really, just again, really sweet deck from the opponent. Or, yeah, I don't think they would minus three here. Okay, so, interesting. Go for that. We, I mean, honestly, we may, we may just be dead to Liliana Ultimate. I do think we're supposed to tear us under the... Elspeth though, but yeah, it is looking a little worrisome here. So, start by crewing Love Struck Beast. Let's play land and then we can attack with one Mutavolt, which I think we should be doing. And then I think we just target all at Liliana now. Yeah. Pretty uh, tight here, though. They obviously have like a second Elspeth or just another really big planeswalker. It could be pretty difficult for us to deal with here. But they may even like just let go of Liliana here. Or I'm sure, I'd be sure, surely they don't. They could like, they could block all the damage if they really want to. I would get rid of all their tokens. Or, sorry. Yeah, they could, they could, sorry, they could block all but two of the damage. Which seems like that's what they're doing. Yeah, okay. Nope. Yes, no. Yeah, no. Double block me to fall. Okay, gotcha. So Liliana goes down to two, so. We won't have to worry about her for a while. We get all the tokens off the battlefield. And then we just tear Sunder. Elspeth. Tear Sunder. Really, really nice right now. Really glad we brought it in post sideboard. And then, yeah, I hope they just don't have another big walker. Um, I guess, like, even if we do, or even if they do, we just have a lot of damage on the battlefield. So we may even, may be able, if they don't have, like, a token producer, we may even be able to just kill them next turn. Probably not, but maybe. But yeah, these are I I really like the layer of the Hydra and the Mutavolts. 
I was a bit iffy at first on having like three layer main deck, one hive, and the four meter vaults as well, but it uh, surprisingly works like really well alongside the vehicles, crewing them up, um, and then the layers work side work well alongside left struck beast as well, just being a one one, whenever you need them to be. Which surprisingly actually maybe we should be on that plane right now. Didn't actually think of that. opponent is either in the tank or on the toilet <laughs> right now don't really know what they're up to um yeah okay what you got oh want to kill the trespasser Wait, what? Doesn't actually kill it though yet. Um. Okay, what is this? Another Elspeth would be pretty bad. <clears throat> Chandra Flame Caller. Oh, and they're just gonna wrath her board. Yeah, shoot. Good, good call from them, though. Well played. Well played. Yeah, I mean, pretty sweet deck. I mean, yeah, dang. Okay, so that makes us able to be attacking, which is nice. Um, I think I'm supposed to play out the chariot. then we can only so what does this do uh don't care uh, the zero is kind of good yeah i probably want to be targeting that now instead oh liliana could kill the elvis mystic but i think that's fine we have the layer like we like we were talking about so let's go like that i'm gonna play out the second chariot So, newly controlled, so we do not want that one, right? So we take that one, still get the two twos so we can attack with it. Right, this is, yeah. So we're able to... Oh my gosh, I just, my finger just like tapped one really quickly. Dang, okay, that really sucks. Oh. We may just be dead now. That was a brutal misclick. Might as well let them know. So they kill our elf. Now what? Grim nemesis. Sworn grim ne nemesis. So I mean, I guess we're like just in pretty tough shape. Um, either way, with this card. Yeah, dang. Okay, they just go for that. I mean, yeah, pretty tough, pretty tough match to decipher our way through, however. They could even, like, start beating us down. Now they just zero the Chandra, which makes sense. I mean, they're at seven minutes on the clock, so there is that aspect to it. Yeah, I think here, yeah, I don't even know what we're supposed to target anymore. <laughs> There's so many cards in play. I guess just the Soren. 
is probably like th the most impactful at the moment. Probably. Um, so if we activate Mutavolt, then Lair's only going to be a 2-2, two -two, so they could block the carrot. But I think, yeah, having multiple multiple attackers is just what we want here. Really uh, interesting match, though. I guess I've been saying this too much. Yeah, so again, they could just kill ah uh, maybe we we're actually supposed to just go after the chandras they could just minus two again yeah maybe we were supposed to do that i mean they would have been yeah they would have been able to do it either way but as we're not even able to get any damage through Let's see if they do it though. Yeah, it's that one turn where they went Liliana plus. Oh, they don't even do that. Okay, Frasco. Oh. Where they went Liliana plus into Wrath Her Board was really, really painful. Get an Oath of Nyssa. Okay. Unfortunately, this may just go to time. I really hate when matches. Uh, go like that. Ooh, Obnixilis. Wow, sweet deck again, sweet deck. Um, because it's just like not like how it works in paper and not fun and is not good for the videos <laughs> as they just get like super long. But what can you do? It's uh, yeah. I mean, maybe we are supposed to concede here if we do want to, like, be nice to the opponent. But, you know, they're playing a very, very slow deck, so it's not like they're clicking through a, a combo that's, like, will inevitably kill, kill me. Yeah. Okay, um, I guess we do the same thing as last turn. Lair will now be a 3 3. Getting around Karyotid, which is a pretty nice. And then I think, yeah, we're just supposed to go after this Chandra again, but like. Or not again, but now. We're supposed to go after the Chandra. But yeah, again, they could just um, block all of our creatures and not take any damage. So yeah, sorry if this is like not too fascinating gameplay or commentary, but <laughs> uh, at least we're able to see a really interesting deck that's, you know, doing doing well against us. So maybe I was incorrect in my um, first assessment of it as being underpowered and not really having much success. but. You know they're able to we're able to have a very nice game here and hopefully like i hope our opponent has interesting matchups with rakdos and um, other popular decks in the format as well so what is ob's ultimate eight every player draws card you lose to the okay so like one of these will be able to kill us here i'm guessing one of the ultimates there's another Chandra. The opponent is... Okay, yeah. Wrath or board makes sense. And then just play the other Chandra. But they're below five minutes. I suppose like the fastest way of killing us is now going Chandra plus. Um, yep, yep, yep. Make a token. 
and then they could even like draw a bunch of cards next turn, right? Yeah. Play Chandra. <clears throat> yeah, this uh, Oath of Nissa, like, uh, quietly doing a lot here. I guess it wouldn't have actually. If they didn't have the Oath of Nissa, they would have still been able to play all their planeswalkers with the Sylvan Carrier Tits, but still quietly doing definitely a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, yeah, I don't think the opponent would be able to kill us next match, or next game rather, um, with this low of time on the clock for them. But yeah, I mean, they were like pausing a lot in between. Uh, like where they don't really have any decisions to be made, but I will uh, concede here. Say GG. Okay, do we want to make any changes? I don't think so. We could like bring in the go blanks against them. Yeah, I think uh, this is fine as is. I mean, the Sky Sovereigns, we didn't hit them last game, but uh, yeah, they're definitely good in the game one. I kind of forgot how powerful this card is against them. Yeah, maybe just not try. This card uh, kind of um, was not good for us. Okay, so on the play, again, the opponent will likely just time out this game, unfortunately. I never like how games go like that, but do have a nice hand. Lots of mana. Thought sees. Tracker. And then here, I think we're... Oh, I guess I kind of forgot about Giganta. I'm not sure if we could have... Cat, we put, we, I'm sure we could have cast it um, at some points in the game last game, but yeah. How to keep in mind Gigantha. Okay, they also have an Elvish Mystic. And I think I just want to run this tracker out. Um, I think we just want to be thought seizing their planeswalkers and not like a potential Oath of Nissa that they have this turn. Three mana could just be Liliana again, which would be all right. Okay, just Nissa, which is definitely better for us. And then here, I suppose we could just thought seeds first. Let's see, ooh, extinction event. Um, Interesting that they didn't play Liliana in that last turn. Uh, I think I'll... Hmm, this is interesting, actually. May just want to take this Extinction event. Yeah, seems probably a bit better than the Liliana at the moment. Um, actually... I'll put Gigantha into hand this turn, so I'll just attack with the tracker. Or nah, I'll, I'll play out, I should have attacked, I'll uh, play out the elves here because the uh, Liliana. want to have as many creatures in play. Um, Noting that they can just 
make a token, and then kill one of our creatures. Oh, what? Okay, thought sees bug. <laughs> it kind of sucks. Okay, let's uh, let's just put your in hand. So now they're f 6 th through our turn. <laughs> I don't think they were doing that last turn, or maybe they would. They were I'm not last uh, game rather. There is Liliana. <laughs> And another token. Okay. So, I mean, this could come down to the wire here, actually. They could have some game against us if uh, they get Liliana to ultimate. It could be actually really scary. Tracker's a nice draw. Let's um, attack. Doesn't really do much, but we're definitely supposed to do it. So they could draw a bunch of cards next turn if they want to, uh, or three cards, potentially four, if they want to cash in their um, Nissa. Okay, they kill the elf. So they do draw three cards. Gotcha. Mana Confluence. And... What is this? Another extinction event? No. Ooh, okay, Chandra. Oh, and they're just gonna try to attack us. Okay. Very interesting. So can we take six damage this turn? Chandra is actually a really good draw for them. I think I think we could take six damage for now. Try to find another blocker. Chariots, uh, definitely another blocker. Okay. Yeah, and we can attack with a junk Gigantha too. Oh, they don't even block. Uh, was that just trying to go for more time? Uh, or just misclick? I'm not really sure. Another Nissa. Okay, make the tokens. Yeah, yeah. Looks like we got it here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is going to be doing anything. Okay, sweet. Um, so, <laughs> a little stressful at the end here. Um, but yeah, very, again, I love the opponent's deck. Um, really uh, fascinated by this. May even just like try to brew up something like this myself. Uh, but yeah, other than that, see you guys for match number four. Okay, here for match number four. Long match, last match, so I'm a little tired at the moment, but hopefully we can either speed things up or make things, I don't know, a bit more interesting. We do have a nice hand here. Turn three, Love Struck Beast potentially, turn four, Sky Sovereign potentially. Very nice. 
yeah i mean i guess we've been playing against pretty interesting decks though like all three are pretty much um like off meta ish um the most on meta being the uh, match two like boros pretty much burn deck um yeah first match was pretty interesting and the third match last match was a uh, really fun as well okay looks like this could just be Rakdos I think I will just make two tokens here so it'll be interesting to see how this deck fares against the uh, top deck at the moment yep I mean, yeah, this deck doesn't really like, have too many <laughs> uh, tough decisions to make, <laughs> so maybe that's uh, another indicator of how it could not necessarily be a mid-range deck, but I mean, I'm not trying to mid like diss non-mid-range decks, but <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, just play my dude, swing, that's pretty much it. Okay, opponent with a nice curve out here. Push Harvester Fable. However, we're able to attack pretty cleanly here. Play out the second left strike beast and then set up just straight up Sky Sovereign next turn, which will feel really nice, for that's for sure. Especially against Rakdos, definitely like having the Sky Sovereign game one against them to see how uh, impactful it will be. So they go deep, discarding Crooks and Crooksa and Den. Looks like they may want to cast a four. Uh, well, now they just fatal push. Okay, gotcha. Okay, fair enough. I'll take my two damage. Okay. So I always forget, is this sorcery speed? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I think. Just go for the boat. Pretty simply. Um, I think I'll just take out the Misery Shadow at this point while they're not able to get it above three toughness. This does open up another fetal push for them on our beast, but no, okay, that's fine. So they could have Crooks in next turn if they want to. Um, could discard a land. Looks like they're immediately going for that. Wow, okay. Fast player. Rakto's fast player. And then, let's see, okay, they just attack. So, Crooks is actually really good against us at the moment. Um, so like, I think we're supposed to take this damage, um, and then see what we draw next turn. Definitely wanting to hit Fatal Push. Thought Seize is not what we wanted to draw. I guess we could just leave that to uh, being able to discard it. So they can't f copy their crook, so which is nice. I mean, I guess they can for like an extra three damage to us, but um, I suppose, yeah, we just go in with the Sky Sovereign. Oh, I, guess, I always forget we could. Um, kill their things with Sky Sovereign, so I think we'll just definitely uh, kill their reflection here. And then just try to hold on uh, till next turn. Um, 
yeah, and I think I, I think I run out this elf as well. So if they kill the love struck beast, then we always had Meta Vault plus one power to crew the Sky Sovereign. They, I believe, uh, if they're not, if they're playing like Power Word Kill over Dreadbore, then they obviously have access to instant speed removal for Sky Sovereign. But if they are playing the Dreadbore, then we're in good shape. They would have need to. They would need to to have drawn it uh, this turn though, as they didn't have it last turn. <laughs> oh, I guess I should have put Jigoth into hand actually last turn. Kind of forgot about that. Likely not going to be using Mita Vault here. Um, yeah, I think we're just chump blocking and then. We could take five. I doubt they're playing lightning strike in their deck. <laughs> uh, or no, no, we should we should play under, around a second Kroxa. So go like that. I I've, I think they usually only play one one Kroxa main deck, at least recently. But still want to play around that as we have the luxury to do so, I believe. I mean, we could have thought season last turn and put Gigantha into hand just to discard Kroxa. Maybe that was the that was the play. Okay, so they did have the second Kroxa. Interesting. So they do play two, maybe even three. Still at three life though. So they need to have remove a spell. Um. Yeah, and I guess we could even go like this and then attack to have two lethal attackers. So they need to have two instant speed removal spells. Uh, one of them can be fatal push on the left struck beast, but the other has to be power word kill or most likely power word kill, but they could be playing Heartless Act, but uh, Power Word Kill is a bit more relevant than Heartless Act, at least uh, at the moment in the meta. Yep. They're playing extremely slowly, so yeah, they just didn't have anything. So wow. Whew. Okay. Got game one against Reactors, which feels very nice. Terror Sunder is nice against them. We saw Kroxa, so Scrooge is nice. Also just like as an efficient threat is nice as well. Outland Liberator could be powerful as well. Same with Frasca. Possibly even the trophy. Maybe not the Goblinks, but I could definitely start by cutting the Thought Seizes. Um I like all these three drops. Maybe not so much the Love Struck Beast as much. Um, Misery's Shadow does seem fairly impactful as well, um, so maybe looking back at these, could don't need the third Liberator. Maybe we don't even need, like, the, the second one. And then cut a, probably just a Misery's Shadow. I think I'd rather just see Love Strike Beast than that card. I think this should be fine like this, though. Yeah, I mean, really powerful deck so far, though. Two and one so far. Up a game against Reactos feels really nice, of course. And yeah. 
nice hand, that's for certain. Okay, so they kept in Thossies, which, I mean, if they think we're a mid-range deck is not correct, at least in my opinion, as it is just a, a card advantage neutral. So they're not drawing anything, but they are getting rid of all of our creatures. Ah, maybe we actually shouldn't have. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I think we we're definitely supposed to um, put Jagonth into hand that turn to, to solely play around uh, Stomp. I kind of just like did that really quickly and have been forgetting about Jagantha. So Trespasser is really good. I do try left struck beast though. Which I think we're just playing out. Oopsies. Okay, big dumb thingy, drew another left struck beast. So I suppose we can attack with our left struck beast uh, on the battlefield. I'm sure they'll just take the damage and then we can just play the other one. And then leave up Fatal Push if we really need to. Hive of the Eye Tyrant could be uh, interesting here if we get down to just racing each other. Kroxa, okay. They're a bit far away from being able to escape that though, fortunately. And just a harvester. And no attacks. Very nice, okay. Ooh, and our own trespasser is really nice. Okay, so let's start by attacking. They just take the 10 damage. Okay. <laughs> Now we can, I suppose, play Trespasser, leave up Push plus Mutavault. Seems pretty decent. Take out that Kroxa, which is very crucial as well. And okay, they're immediately going Sacrifice Blood Token, so they could have Fatal Push here. We also just want to hit more cards or gain life. <clears throat> this uh, fatal push sitting in hand though could be uh, potentially very powerful for us hitting the shield grid or possibly even just going for lethal next turn and uh, pushing the harvester if we're not able to hit revolt as we do have the hive which puts them down to four just immediately and if they don't if they could they could play that that bone crusher giant so you have three blockers so we probably would yeah we uh well we would still have lethal actually they take um no sorry we would we would not have lethal they would be at four it's they would be at two 
So, um, yeah, pretty tight game, though. I wonder what their head is at in terms of what they have. Okay, so they do just play out the Bruin Crystal Giants, so. They definitely cannot attack here. So I wonder if we kill this harvester. If we kill the harvester, we, I guess we could have, so another one damage from the trespasser trigger, which I didn't think of before. They, uh, yeah, I mean, it just has to be so good for us to attack with everything, though, because they trade, so we trade the beast for shield, or beast for nothing. Tra they trade, we trade trespassers, possibly. Yeah, I think, I think we're supposed to go for it here. And yeah, um, I think we're supposed to go for this. Yeah, this attack just like favors us so much. And then let's just attack with everything so they cannot think about keeping their shoulder alive. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they could do this. Did not think of that actually, yeah. This leaves them at one. Whoops, that was a misplay. Okay, should have thought about them doing that. I mean, they, they do have to, we are at like uh, four life now if they decide to attack. I think we're still in good, definitely in good shape though. So they'll be at three on their turn. No, they don't decide to do that. This is pretty interesting. Really, really interesting actually. Okay. So, okay, do the same thing. Nope, don't do the same thing. Yep, do the same thing. <laughs> Okay, so they go for that, so we keep both of our beasts. They keep their shield red, though, and they're at one life, about to be at three. I don't... I can't think of any card that kills us directly here, though. They have to deal up four damage to us with three cards. They can't have Kroxa. Uh, yeah, I really can't think of anything. I mean, like, they have two creatures. Oh, I guess two stomps kills us. That's the only thing that kills us. But they probably would have already seen that by now. Um, I think they're just dead. They have to have two stomps. Yeah. Sweet, okay, got the Rakdos, Rakdos win, that feels really, really good. Um, legit, don't think I've, or I've won against Rakdos, like, with my, with Black Green in the past, but, like, not in a long time, so that feels really nice. Uh, see you guys for match five. Okay, here for match five. We're three and one right now, so really, really nice record. Um, no matter how this match ends up, and we have a pretty clean hand. No turn one accelerant, but that's definitely okay. Especially with the the opponent on the mulligan. To six thoughts, he's gonna be really nice. Haven't seen too many turn one thought seizes with this deck. Um, 
but yeah, I guess that makes sense with the mana darks we're playing. Okay, so mono blue spirits, pretty cool. What is this? Ooh, that's a cool one. Okay. Um, I think we want to take the Shacklegeist as it's just their like most annoying card. Neville Gust Herald could be pretty effective here as though as well though. Maybe even the Geist Late Snare if we want to try resolving this chariot. Yeah, maybe we're supposed to do that. But then we could potentially get run down pretty easily, especially with the Supreme Phantom. Yeah. I think I, I like taking the Shackle Geist. We'll see, though. That could be incorrect. I think definitely if they had a turn one play, I would have taken that. Okay, so let's just start by attacking and just take it makes sense and then I think we just run out the trespasser here instead of thought seizing as it's just mana inefficient okay they hit the third land go spectral sailor plus attack sure Okay, start by attacking again. I just uh, love being able to raise the opponent here. Okay, and then I think we're just supposed to play out the tracker. Just keep up um, the creatures here. Okay, that does make sense. Or, oh, yeah, sorry, I, I totally forgot that I didn't take that. My bad. Um, in that case, probably should have just gone for the Thought Seas, but we do have the second tracker um, either way. But yeah, I should definitely should have kept that in mind. My bad, guys. Oh, wow. I just go for this. So put us down to nine. The flip trespasser, though. Um, this is pretty interesting. Um, so we can attack for six plus seven, put them down to five. Uh, We could, could thought seize. Yeah, we could thought seize plus elf as a blocker for the faceless haven because they can't have haven plus herald next turn, so they can't tap the elf and like attack with the haven. So I think I like that a bit better. And then in that case, well, we would be at we'd be at seven life, yeah, because. Trespasser will gain his life. And then, so in that case, we could also pump the Misery Shadow by one. But uh, let's um, toss these first. Oh, okay. And they just have that card. Okay, cool. So take their Herald and Snare. Grow this by one. play elf and 
and then can't really imagine what they could draw to um, keep them in this game. They hit us for three, but are you still alive? Yep. So they kind of have to start chump blocking. They went to combat pretty quickly, which makes me think they could have drawn just like a permission spell or just a land. But not very sure. They, uh, they seem to be thinking pretty tough here, so they're pretty uh, hard here, so they may have something else. I think maybe like Petty Theft would be like the most uh, difficult card for us to deal with. Oh, they attack for one. No, <laughs> I can see it. Okay. Okay, sweet. Wow. Winning a lot with this deck. Um, <laughs> maybe it's not good that I'm surprised <laughs> by that. Uh, so, probably don't want to bring in Trophy. Bring in Scoos. Um, yeah, but, you know, let's do that. I like keeping in some number of Thought Seizes usually in this matchup. So I think that's just trim down two and then add in the two scoos. Yeah. Go like that. Um, Sky Sovereign could be really good in this matchup if we're able to cast it. Hmm. I uh, don't like that hand. It has no black mana. This hand has one land. We are on the draw. I don't think I like going down to five, so I will keep this hand. It has Fatal Push. It has Heart's Desire. So we do have some early, am some amount of early play. But, um, yeah, definitely need to hit lands. Okay, that's a land. Um, yeah, I don't, f yeah. I don't feel bad not pushing the, uh, Mausoleum Wanderer this turn, so let's just go for that. Okay, Minadork is a fairly nice draw. Um, let's attack. Um, Ovis Mystic and then pass turn we're at all chains okay um, yeah I'm not sure which one I want to kill more Rattle Chains or Mausoleum Wanderer Probably is just the Mausoleum Wanderer, though. I think it'll deal us more damage in the long run, I feel like. Sky Sovereign, okay. So a bit far away from casting that, but that is good to know about. So three mana, they could have the Nebulgast Herald now, so let's not go for the attack. Um, I do like going for the Trespasser, though. Plays into, yeah, I was about to say, it plays into Counterspell really poorly, but can't do much about that. At least we could get the, in the one damage now. Maybe we should have gone with the Love Struck Beast instead, though as that's like the lesser of the two three mana spells there if we really wanted to have the tr the um oh wow this is really good if we really wanted to have the trespasser alive 
So yeah, kind of sucks, especially now. <laughs> it really sucks. I totally th thought this was a three-two for some reason. Um, this land where waste is kind of slowly killing us as well. <clears throat> Yeah, it looks like we're probably not going to win this one. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really powerful. Okay. Um I think I'll just concede there. Just didn't draw all the hands that game. Kind of sucks. Do we want to change anything? I don't think so. We could bring in Trophy of Raska, but I think they're... Raska is probably a bit too slow, and Trophy is... Uh, I don't like bringing in Trophy against Spirits, as they uh, just have too much like permission. Okay, a little risky, but I think I'm keeping this one. No black mana. No... Second land. I, I don't know, I'm feeling lucky, I guess. <laughs> and yeah, they don't have, I believe they don't have any turn one ways of dealing with the Elvish Mystic, so. Okay, sweet. That's nice, so let's just go Elf, Elf. Keep up Fatal Push. Could even sky sovereign next turn, which could be really, really good actually. So they could be holding up rattle chains here, or just permission. So I think I'll just start by pushing this. They'll sacrifice it, and then go to our turn. I think. We're just supposed to go for the uh, Seeker's Chariot here. As it's pretty clear that they just have permission. Just play around. Or I guess they can't have Geist Light Snare. Oh, and they just win. Okay. Sweet. So I got there with the 4 1. Um, wow. I guess they just didn't have a counter spell for that. Jeez. Okay. Let's go back to the deck. You get to see my recording sit up. Nice, nice. Um. Yeah, deck felt really powerful. Um, so we lost only to that one, one random combo deck with the <laughs> uh, bargain plus Thassa's Oracle. So that wasn't the best, but yeah, deck felt really, really powerful. So my main thoughts surrounding this deck is, I'm not like sure if you could call this a mid range deck, honestly. <laughs> so it's like. Does it really fit into my my um, hero archetype of wanting to play all mid-range decks? I don't know. Maybe maybe it is, maybe not. Um, it obviously has mid-range elements in the form of our interaction, trespasser, tracker. But like, I think like having chariot, left struck beast, uh, even to a lesser extent, the misery shadow, and just the, the I think the most glaringly like the eight one mana dorks probably doesn't make it a mid-range deck but with that being said i it was a really fun deck to play um black and green colors i always love being able to play those colors in pioneer especially when we're having this much success with them um i think that i would probably change the side part just a little bit i would probably take out the third liberator put in the second tire sender should probably just do that now um and then even take out one of these damping spheres for a duress, but uh, even take out this Vraska too. I don't think Vraska is too good. Uh, as we saw, we just two would Rakdos, so I don't think like we really need this card. Um, yeah, this this deck is feels really nice to me. Um, let me know your thoughts about it. Uh, I felt a little bit naked not having any more removal other than the pushes and the sky sovereigns. 
Um, but again, like just being on the beatdown plan is basically the, just the name of the game for this deck. And perhaps you just don't want any more removal than that. Those uh, seven cards, really just like the four cards though. Um, yeah, with that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed it myself. It really feels good to get some some really good success that 4-1 with the black and green colors in Pioneer. Even if, if, even if it may not be mid-range. However, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.